Okay, so we're going to talk, go over how to write a linear inequality from each graph. Okay, so the first things that you want to do is you want to figure out what is your y-intercept. Okay, so to figure out what the y-intercept is, we're going to look at the point where the line crosses the y-axis, which is right here. So the y-intercept would be 5, so our b value is 5. Okay, the next thing we want to do is pick another good point that will help us find our slope. Okay, so when I'm looking, I'm going to go down my line, and I see this looks like another good point right here. And I'm going to find the slope. So to find my slope, I went down 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces, and over 1. So that means my slope, m, would be negative, one, uh, negative 4 over 1, which is just negative 4. Okay, so here's my slope, here's my y-intercept. So these are the two things that I wanted to find, okay, to start with. Once I find them, I'm going to write them into slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, except I'm going to change the equals to an inequality. Okay, you want to make sure that you pick the right inequality, so you're going to use either less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, okay? When I'm looking at this particular graph, I know it's not going to be either of these ones because these ones don't have an equal to, and I see the line on the graph is solid. So it's going to be one of these, okay? When I'm looking at the shading, if I just put my pencil on the line and I go down, that's where the shading is. So because the shading is under, I'm going to choose the less than or equal to symbol for this particular graph. So here's the equation of my, or the inequality that I can use to represent this graph would be y is less than or equal to, then I'm going to plug in my slope, negative 4, x, and I'm going to plug in my y-intercept, positive 5, okay? That would be my answer for the first problem. Okay, let's take a look at the second one. So the second one, I'm going to identify my y-intercept. My y-intercept is right here, so my b value for my y-intercept is positive 1. I'm going to identify another good point to help me find my slope, and then I'm going to see my rise is down 1 and write 1, 2, 3 for my run. So my slope is going to be down 1, write 3. I'm going to plug this into the format of y equals mx plus b, but I'm going to choose the inequality I want to use. I know it's not going to be one of these with an equal to because it's a dashed line. It's going to be one of these two. When I look at the shading, if I go to the line, I have to go up to find my shading. So that's going to be above the line. So that would mean a greater than symbol. So here's my inequality. Y is greater than negative one third X plus one. So that would be my answer there. Okay. Um, it says, then determine whether each point is a solution. Okay, so I'm going to take each of these points and I'm going to write yes or no to, next to each one to say whether or not it's a solution. To say whether or not it's a solution, I'm just going to graph each point on the graph and see if it falls in the area where the solutions are. So negative two comma five, that would be up here. So that would be yes, it's in the shaded region. Uh, point B, four comma negative five, four negative five. That's not in the shaded region, that would be a no. Okay, um, negative four comma five, so negative four comma five, that would be up here. That would be a yes in the shaded region. And then 0, 5. 0, 5 is right here. That is on the line, but this line is solid, which means it contains solutions, so that is a yes. Okay, for this problem number 2, I'm going to graph 1, 4. That's up here. That's in the shaded region. That is a yes. I'm also going to graph negative 5, 5. Negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is a yes as well. La, uh, let's see, letter C is over 3, down 8. 
That's definitely a no. And then letter D is over three, up zero. Now this is on your line, but it is a dash line. Dash lines do not contain solutions, so this is a no. Okay. All right, let's move on to the next one. So the next one says, is each ordered pair a solution? Okay, we can actually figure this out without having to graph it. I mean, we could graph it. Let's say we had our Chromebook out and we were on desmos.com. We could type in this equation and graph it. But if I didn't have my Chromebook out and I didn't want to do the work of graphing it, I could just plug in each point and check. So remember, in each point, there's an X and a Y. And so I can plug them in to check and see if they make the inequality true. So for the first one, I have 2 times negative 3 plus 10. I want to check if that's less than or equal to positive 12. So let's check and see. Is negative 6 plus 10 less than or equal to 12? Well, that makes 4. So is 4 less than or equal to 12? Yes. So this would be, yes, it is a solution. Okay, let's check the next one. Okay, we have 2 times 0 plus 12 is less than or equal to 12. And remember, I'm just plugging in 0 for x and 12 for y. Okay, so now I get 0 plus 12 is less than or equal to 12. And so I want to check and see, is 12 less than or equal to 12? Well, it is equal, so this one is also a solution. Okay, let's check the last one. For x, I'm plugging in 1. For y, I'm plugging in 14. Okay, I get 2 plus 14 is less than or equal to 12. Well, 2 plus 14 is 16. Is 16 less than or equal to 12? No. So this one is not a solution. Okay. All right, let's take a look at number 4. Okay, same thing, but I'm plugging in into this inequality now, each of these points, their x and their y value, right? So for the x, y is, oops, I actually need to plug in y, so I actually don't want to put y there, I want to put negative 4. So let's write negative 4 is greater than negative 1 half times 0 minus 4. Well, 1 half times 0, that's going to be 0. 0 minus 4 is just negative 4. So is negative 4 greater than itself? No. So that one is a no. Okay, let's go to the second one. Your y value is 6. So 6 is greater than negative 1 half times 4 minus 4. Okay, 4 times negative 1 half is negative 2. And negative 2 and negative 4 makes negative 6. So I want to ask myself, is 6 greater than negative 6? Is that true? Yes, it is. So this is a solution because the statement is true. Okay, so remember, if the statement is true, it's going to be a yes. If the statement is false, like this one, then it's going to be a no. Okay, let's go to the last one. Your y value is negative 10 and your x value is positive 6. Let's plug them in and see what we get. So 6 times negative 1 half gives us negative 3. And here's what we get now. Negative 10 is greater than negative 7. So I know sometimes this can be confusing because we're dealing with negative numbers, but it's saying that negative 10 is bigger than negative 7. Now remember, when it comes to negative numbers, the closer you get to zero, the bigger the number is. So negative 10 is not actually bigger than negative 7. This is a false statement, so this is no. That's not going to produce a solution. Okay, what I'd like you guys to do to finish is complete the questions down here in the summary section, and then save this and it will end up going into your notebook.